can choose speaker and what's the other one called? Gallery view. Speaker or gallery. But if you choose speaker, then the speaker will be the big picture. Um, and especially when we're introducing some of the coaches and some of our other guests as well. The chat function at the bottom, as soon as you think of a question, still keep yourself muted, but write the question down. And we will just go through those questions and answer them. If we haven't answered them by the end of the session, we will make sure that we do answer them. So we will be going through that chat quite regularly. Okay. Uh, just wanted to introduce Ian Rebilliard, so also known as Moose. Um, so Moose is the Managing Director of the Central Coast Academy of Sport and seated here in a nice social distance from me is um, Emily Burgess-Moore and she's the Athlete Services and Events Manager. I'm Robin Lohart and I'm the Programs and Communications Manager at the Central Coast Academy of Sport. Um, I'm not sure if all of these coaches are present at the moment, but if you are present, I would like you to just say, hi, mm -hmm. I'm, and say your name even after I've introduced you so that the athletes can actually see your face as well. So in the 2020 athletics program, um, under the sprints and hurdles discipline, and I know that Mick isn't present tonight, oh, yeah. we have Mick Zisti. Um, we have Lenore Beaton. So, Lenore, are you there? Okay, and we also have Larry Spencer. There's me. Where's me there? Okay, so you just need to, just need to mute your audio, please. Thank Can you see me? In the jumps discipline, um, we have the expertise of Matt Horsnell. Are you on at all, Matt? And then in throws, uh, we're using Kerry Smith, if you're there, Kerry. And then in middle distance, and which we'll also um, be using, we, we will have Charlie Brooks, but we'll also use Mick Zisti in that discipline as well. With our swimming coaches, um, the head coach of the whole program and the head coach of the development program, we have Graham Carroll. Are you on with us today, Graham? That's okay. And the head coach of the elite program, we have Stephen Kreitoff. Just call me Robinson Crusoe. I'm the only one here. Well <laughs> done, Steve. Great to hey, see everybody. you. So I think it's I think you're in a bit of a dark room, but um, probably most of the swimmers probably know you anyway. Yeah. yeah and then... Hey, Steve. Uh, <laughs> and hey, Tom, you're back. <laughs> then we've got, uh, as, a, as an assistant coach for the Academy program, we have Samuel Jude, and I know that Sam's on. Hi, Sam. You there, Sam? Okay, so moving on to touch football, head coach this year, Cody Frost. He was assistant coach for our program last year and he stepped up into the uh, head coach position. You there, Cody? Yeah, what's going on? Yay, nice to see you. So those that don't know Cody, um, here he is, but I think that probably most of the people in touch football world probably do know Cody. And um, assistant coach, Liz Bowler. Is Liz on? That's okay. We'll all get to know Liz. So uh, Liz is new into our program this year and we do welcome Liz into the program as well. With guest co coach um, Mark Tipple, who will be joining us just a little bit later. So that's the coaching uh, lineup. Very exciting coaching lineup. And just to let you know that we have some of the best coaches in the state in our coaching lineup. So really advantageous for you as athletes um, to be in this program with those coaches. So I'll just hand over to M now. All right, so this is the part. We're just going to run through a bit of um, who the CCAS is. I mean, we're so lucky that there's a bunch of you online today that are returning athletes. But for those that are new to us, uh, welcome. We're really looking forward to uh, um, meeting you face-to-face, -face, hopefully sooner than later. Um, 
And as Rob said at the start, this is just tonight's just sort of an overview of who we are and how, what we do, and just an, um, a run through of how the CCAS, uh, we're adjusting to these, um, the current situation we're in and um, how we're gonna run these programs now and into the future when we can get back to face-to-face. So Central Coast Academy of Sport, um, since inception, we've had 3,572 athletes come through our programs um, on over 21 sporting disciplines. Annually, we operate 12 to 14 sport development programs, and we have anything from 250 athletes in those sporting programs. Um, you've probably, I'm sure you've all been on a website and you can see the sports we offer, but we're currently doing AFL, athletics, basketball, we have a Future Stars program, golf, hockey, Indigenous Talent ID, netball, netball umpire swimming, touch football and try. Um, so but ideally these sport, our sports programs operate in sports off seasons, which seem to be coming shorter and shorter every year. So at the moment we're calling, we, what we have online tonight is our winter sports program. So we've got athletics, swimming and touch football tonight. Um, and then ideally at the end of the year, we'll launch our summer programs again. So the vision here for us has always been to provide a sporting pathway for pre-elite athletes um, through meaningful sports programs. We want to keep you guys training on the coast for as long as we possibly can until, you know, it, until you get taken away to the next level, um, which, you know, hopefully you can stay on the coast for as long as possible. Uh, a really important thing to know about Central Coast Academy of Sport is that we we really can't operate with these corporate car, these key corporate partners that you see on the screen now. Um, we are heavily supported by all these sponsors here, and the further you guys come along in sport, you'll get to know how important the role of sponsors are. Um, for for us, we have a lot of individual like specific sports sponsors, but these are our key corporate partners that really. Um, help run all of our programs here. So um, you can see at the top there, Mingara, which is where Rob and I are in our office here tonight, which is just located right next to the athletics track. Um, we've got our Central Coast Council, Greater Bank, the Uni of Newcastle, NVN News, um, HIT 101.3 and um, Triple M. And then we've got Coast Sport, who are joining us online tonight, who really provide so much support to all of our programs. And we'll go into those guys again a bit later on. As I mentioned, then we have sort of individual key um, <coughs> sport-specific sponsors, which really lend their, lend their help to those sports. We've, left, we've got basketball and golf on there again tonight, just to show you that the state sporting organisations help as well. Um, with Touch Football, Gosford RSL is one of our key sponsors there. Um, swimming, we have Mingara and also the council. We use PLC and Mingara. And then athletics, Mingara, we couldn't operate without them. And athletics, New South Wales are there as well. So, And then we have Coast Sport that comes into each of those programs um, at a different capacity as well. So um, another key sports partner. And someone we just couldn't work without. So. Yeah, that's right. We're going to hear from Coast Sport <laughs> a little bit later on though. So... I'm just going to keep going through a bit of the admin just so um, you guys know sort of how how it works from the office here. Um, obviously, you've probably had, had a fair bit of communication from Rob or myself recently. Where the, 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 that's us, that's the CCAS, me, Rob and Moose, that's who you'll hear from in the office. So um, always um, come back with us any questions or anything like that. Um, if you can't... Yeah, so contact details. We're the key contact in the office. And then as you get to know, you'll know your coaches and managers. Um, and ideally, once we get back to face-to-face -face sessions, if you need to liaise with the manager as well, that's who you can let know if you're not coming. But for now, everything needs to come through Rob and I. Um, thanks a lot to everyone for getting back these um, injury medical forms and athlete agreements. It's really, really important that we get those signed off. And any major medical issues really need to be flagged to us. I know that we're doing online first, but once we get back to face-to-face, -to -face, um, anything of importance really needs to be highlighted to us. So make sure that not only you get those forms back, but you speak to us about any other conditions. Dress and uniform policy. Obviously, this is a little bit different at the moment. Um, if we were back in so-called normal times, tonight would be the night that you would be getting your CCAS um, kit. Um, we appreciate that that can't happen tonight. 
So anyone that's been an athlete, uh, is a returning athlete, we would encourage you to always wear your CCAS shirt for the online sessions. Anyone that's joining us new this year, which we're so happy to have you, we can arrange to get you a singlet or a shirt. That'll just be a conversation that we need to have after following tonight as to when, mm. when and how we can make that happen. Rob and I are doing sort of separate days in the office, so whether you can come past the office or look, that's a conversation that we can have. Yeah. Um, you won't be getting the same kit this year as you might usually get. Um, there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, one is that normally we provide a playing kit for, say, the touch um, squad. Um, it doesn't look likely that you'll play in any competitions this year yet, so we don't know whether that's required. And that then has a knock-on effect that we're able to reduce the fees slightly to reflect that. So same as the swimming squad, we, we would normally go on a tour um, and therefore you'd get a tracksuit and your swimmers and lots of other things. They may not be needed this year. So if we don't have to provide those, it's also just a way to save um, all parents a bit more own money on the fees. So that will be an ongoing, something that we'll keep looking at as it goes on. Um, if we get to a point where we can... I don't think we'll be running a tour this year. But, look, it's something that we'll monitor as we go along. So, yeah. And we sort of have two kits. We have an online kit. So you're getting a singlet and the program with the online kit. And then when we do go into face-to-face, -face, it's a different kit that you will be getting and different prices for, for those two programs. It's just the way that we could work it out. Um, can we just get Lenore to say, hi, I'm Lenore, if that's okay? Thank you. Thanks, Lenore. Okay, so hopefully everyone that's in athletics could see um, Lenny Lenore just then. So she's one of the sprints coaches. So thanks for joining us, Lenny. Okay, we'll just keep going through this admin side of it. So attendance, again, look, everything's a little bit different these days. Our expectation would be is at least 90% attendance for our sessions. Um, I think it's really important to note that with these first eight to ten weeks of these programs that we're running online, Probably more than ever, it's really important that we need to know who is attending. Um, we would expect that everyone would attend. Um, and there's a couple of reasons why we need to know. Um, our numbers that we're expecting um, help make the decision on what platform we use to host those meetings on. So you guys are probably a lot more IT savvy than we are anyway, but say we're expecting much bigger numbers, we might choose to use a Teams, another platform or Zoom or things like that. So we really need to make sure that we know who's coming. And it's really important too that you attend those sessions because it's time that we have set aside in the day to make sure our providers are available, that we're available. So again, we would really, really hope that everyone would attend all of those sessions. We realise that things come up last minute, IT issues. But in that instance, we would expect a text or something to come through to us just to let us know what's going on. Um, when it comes down to face, back to face to face, again, attendance is really, really important for the sessions that the coaches plan out, um, the venues that we book. So communication is probably the key thing to say here. If Once we get the schedule and you've got those, get those dates in the diary and then if there's some issues, it's really important to communicate to us if for some reason you can't attend a session. Uh, Media and public relations, again, when we're online, it's going to be a little bit different. But again, we've still got sponsors that are going to be checking in on these sessions. And especially when they're recorded, if they go out for the public, we need to make sure that we're representing Central Coast Academy of Sport in the right light. Um, make sure that you're, you know, when we're in these sessions, you're not um, doing your TikToks at the same time. That's right. Or, you know, <laughs> playing any other game on your phone. It's really important that you engage with us and that we all... Um, focus for the time that we're together and represent the CCIS as best we can. Um, all right, TMAP, we'll talk a bit about TMAP. Yeah, I think that's the next slide, isn't it, Claire? Yeah. Okay. Most people we're hoping after tonight will be on TMAP. Um, there has been a lot come through, so thumbs up to everyone that has managed to get onto TMAP. It's, well done. We understand that uh, if it's not for the athlete, that's fine. But we definitely need to make sure that at least one parent in the house has TMAP. Ideally, it would be great if the athlete can have it as well. Because um, following tonight, that's pretty much going to be our main stream of communication. Um, it's also really important on that app that you've got your notifications turned on. So when we send through messages, you can see what they are. It is set up that we will 
send a message through TMAP and ideally it'll go to your email as well. Um, but if you can keep those notifications on, you'll, you won't miss anything. Um, and we'll keep yeah. the schedules up to date. Schedules will be up to date. Everything will go through TMAP. And so if there is a change to a schedule, so for example, we're not going to use the Zoom plat platform for the nutrition session. We're actually going to switch over to Microsoft Teams. A notification will go out. So if you're not up to date and got your notifications turned on, you'll miss the session. So you do need to be on top of your team app. Yeah, and whether mum or dad or someone else can make sure that they're across that as well, it's just important um, to keep us up to date on team app as, as well. Um, I don't know what else to say about it. Is anyone, probably, yeah. send through any questions that you have about team app. It's, it's pretty easy to it. use that one, but otherwise, but uh, yeah. Really, really important that everyone's a part of that. Just let Rob or I know if you need any help joining. If you're a returning athlete too, it's really important that you rejoin this year's group. So if you were part of the Swimming 2019 group, you need to make sure that you've now requested to be part of the Swimming 2020 group because otherwise you won't see the notifications. That's probably on same with touch and athletics. So make sure that you're in the current year group. Okay. okay, so just a quick rundown on this chart that we have here. So this chart is called the F10 model. It's a strategic framework that supports the levels of sport in Australia, um, originally developed by the Australian Institute of Sport by Juanita Weissensteiner um, in 2017. Um, so most state sporting organisations will adapt this model and it provides a sports pathway from if you have a look at the F, um, which is foundation, through to T, which is talent, into elite, and then into mastery. So your multiple Olympians are um, podiums uh, at your mastery. And as you can see, the, the, the bottom level of F is you learn to walkers and you're, you're learning the gross motor skills and that sort of thing. So where we fit generally is in T1 and T2. So we're using this model, we're in the sports pathway. Athletics New South Wales, touch football New South Wales and swimming New South Wales all at some level use this method, this model. Um, so just, we are in that pathway. We do sometimes trickle down to the F3 um, in some of our younger age groups um, in some of our sports. So. Um, we are on that on that trajectory and on that pathway of the AIS model. If there's any questions about that, send them through and we can help you um, with it. If you go onto the Swimming New South Wales website, it's very in-depth every single step of that. Um, Touch Football has it pretty in-depth in their coaching um, development pathway and Athletics New South Wales has it a little bit different. So FTM is probably something you'll hear a lot more about as you continue on your sporting pathway. And it's really important that you understand where we fit within that. Um, Central Coast Academy of Sport obviously being one of 11 regional academies and we all sit within that pathway for yeah. all of our programs. Oh, okay. What about that? That's it. Oh, okay. okay, so when you click on the schedule um, part of the team app, you will see something like this. And this is just a swimming one. It's actually a duplicate, both sides. <laughs> but basically, you'll get the date, you'll get what it is that we're doing, and then you'll get the time allocation and whether it's Zoom or whether it is um, a Teams meeting. And it does take you through every date is in there all the way up until August, although not on that screen in front of you, but it will provide you with every date that you need all the way up until the end of this program. Now we will discuss it in a little bit, but at what point face-to-face -face comes in, it will be a different program. Okay, so this one, this program can still keep running. Schedule. We'll still keep doing, this schedule will still keep running. And then we will introduce the new face-to-face -face one. So it's just a click away in that it's not there just right now, but it's the click away in the schedules part of Team Map. Yeah. So probably just going on from that with the overview of how it sits at the moment. Um, so this program over pre elite athletes undertaking high performance training operating from May to October. Look, ideally we've got this online program set up to run till August, and we have every every 
thing crossed. Every we have yeah. every belief that we're going to get back to face to face as soon as we can. Yeah. Um, are we talking about that on this page or the next one? Anyway. Um, um, specialized training with um, expert coaches and health providers. We've got educational components. Each program is about advancing yourself as an athlete and a person. Remember, remember there are many athletes that would like to be in this program. So it's really important that you get take put into it as much as you can. We can only, um, you can only get better by wanting to be a part of it. Um, every program has an open door policy. So please, Rob and I are only ever a phone call away. If there's something you want to check in about, or and same with the coaches, they're always going to be available to help us all out. Um, so this component of the program is offered as online only. So Rob, and I, Rob has probably rebuilt this program about three or four times this year. Obviously, we were looking to launch it just before we all went into um, uh, lockdown, isolation, whatever we want to call it. We've been really, really keen to still make sure that we can get something up and running. And we feel really positive about the fact that we're going to run the online component first. How CCIS programs work is there always has been face-to-face -face sessions and education sessions. The only difference at the moment is that we've broken it really clearly into two parts. It's normally all in one schedule. So it isn't too far from what we would it's normally do. Far. There is quite a few more educational inclusions. So you're actually lucky. It's, you're actually, getting it's more. actually, a, a, there's more depth to the educational yeah. side than what we have been able to offer, which has been a real positive to come out of this and being, used, being able to use these online platforms. Um, the ideally, we're going to get back to face to face, but at the moment, we just want to um, stress to everyone that face to face will will only happen for CCIS in line with any guidelines um, that are set out by the, the state government. We are, we're not going to get too ahead of ourselves, and just because you might hear next week that the pools are open or the track opens, it doesn't mean the next day we're going to be able to start those sessions. There's going to be the proper planning to take place. And we also have to wait for um, the proper, um, the proper policies and guidance of everything, not just the fact that you can train in 10 or that you can train yeah. in 20. You know, there's a lot more to it. There's a lot more um, biosecurity and all of that sort of thing that we need to consider before we can go launch straight into face-to-face. -face. Yeah, it's something that's our top priority. Um, and as soon as we're able to, it also relies on um, us getting access to the venues um, and what sort of priority will be given to who can access venues and at what stage. So as soon as we have any of that information, we're going to make sure you guys have it straight away. Um, and look, the way things are going, we do feel confident that we'll be back to that sooner than later. So um, fees, again, we'll talk about in a minute. I think that um, it's really important to stress at the moment that we understand that at the moment, uh, there are lots of families that are being put under a bit of financial pressure. Um, and that's the reason we've kind of broken down this program into the two parts so that you don't have to feel like you have to um, pay this full fee at the start. Um, the reason there's a fee for the online component is uh, the work that goes in behind it, the providers that we're working with, and numerous other things that um, resources that we're using to make sure that this happens. Um, as we just talked about, this has always been built into our programs. It's not something new. It's just at the moment, it's been, it's there's such a clear divide because we've split the program in half. So we believe that what we can give you online is going to put you in good stead for when we get back to face-to-face -face sessions. Right. Yep. Um, and so that's why we've broken the component into two parts. Look, at the moment, you're only going to receive a, a small invoice for the online part that will probably come out in the next week or so. And then once we can 100% guarantee and once we've had face-to-face -face sessions, that's when we'll look at what the balance of the program is going to look like. Um, taking into account how many times we'll be, access, be able to access the venue, whether we're going to be able to get a full kit to you if that's needed, um, what guest coaches, what we'll be able to use in those sessions. Yeah. So the other thing that we'll definitely still be able to do include you know is the athlete celebration and what that might look like at the end of the year too so there will be lots of different things that we can add into it as time rolls on so um as always just talk to me privately or speak with us in another um, another platform if there's something we can do to help with any kind of payments okay i think is there anything else rob that we want to well, talk we'll about come yeah. back again in after this so we'll pass over to <clears throat> pass over to matt cranny from coast sport 
Um, they will do uh, intro to who they are, where they are, and that sort of thing. Um, so do you want to just... Yeah, so Matt, are you there? Yep. Hi, guys. Hi. <laughs> you have to stop sharing. Yeah, so Matt, I'll stop sharing my screen and I might hand over to you. Are you happy to take the lead? I can. Give me a second. Let's see. So Matt's coming to us from Nepal, it looks like. Yeah. He's just swiping in. Uh, places you'd rather be, right? <laughs> okay. So. Uh, is that working for you guys? That's working. Good. Yeah, beauty. Otherwise, I'm in my garage, so it doesn't quite cut it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, and over first, to you. Yeah. Okay, beauty. Um, firstly, congratulations on making into the uh, 2020 winter program for athletic swimming and um, touch football. We're certainly excited to to work with you guys in a new new platform, and you'll be meeting a few of our other guys next week um, as the programs roll out, and this week as well. I understand with the swimming. Um, now, firstly, let's get everyone to stand up for a second. And can I have the first person that can do 10 squats in a row? Type done into the into the little text box down the bottom. All right, so we're gonna get a bit of engagement here. I can't see the text box that's disappeared on my end, guys. So who's, you, Robin, you guys can tell me who's the first one to finish. Yeah. I haven't seen, I'm seeing like a couple of people doing squats, but not all of them doing squats, so. I'm going to name a few names. Ashley, come on, where are your squats? Lara, oh, where are your Sienna, squats? Sienna, let's get up and come get on, Coop, Come on, Cooper. What about I, can you see you, I can see you guys on the video, right? <laughs> Good. We're getting a few. Fergus is up and doing it. Kylie's doing it. Excellent. Um, just thought, because normally you guys are sitting down all day, right, on Zoom channels. So we better at least get you guys up and about um, to get started. So who is the winner? Who, who wrote down? Oh, hang on, I've lost down first. Let me see. Yeah, we'll tell you in a sec. We're just um, verifying the winner, verifying it just now. No, I'm not <laughs> I've found it. I've found Tom's here. I think Tom. So we've got some pretty quick athletes here, which is pretty cool. All right. So now uh, a bit about us. So let me see if I can get this presentation going. Sorry about the tech, guys. There we go. So we're mainly, we've built up our business mainly around just helping people feel well, move well, and therefore perform well to do what you guys do best. Um, we want you guys out and about training, not in with us. So the key is prevention. Is it, is it all working guys? No, you need to, uh, you need to share your screen. Yeah. I think he has, maybe it's just us. Okay. Yep. We see it. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah. Okay, beauty. So that's mainly what we've built our business around and we, we're sort of loving working with, now my end's not working. So we work with a bunch of different sporting teams to try and help along the way. And we've certainly built our involvement with the Academy of Sport over the past four years and um, doing more and more and more and helping more junior athletes like yourself. Um, that's a few of the teams we've worked with over the past sort of number of years. Um, we mainly work with physiotherapy, uh, exercise physiology and, and strength and conditioning. Uh, we have a dietitian that works with us, a uh, podiatrist that's got a sports uh, focus as well. And we do sports coverage when, when we're allowed to do sport. Um, but right now we're gonna help you guys in, in sort of different ways. Um, these are our key things you know, in partly in a way. So if you come in, we do injury assessment, we can do specific screenings one-on-one. -on -one. We normally run big group screenings with you guys, and that's normally what next week would be. Um, but it's instead, it's going to be a slightly different online uh, program that'll um, that should work still pretty well to give you a few things to to take home. Um, but we and we have Joe doing a nutrition talk in June, I think it is um, later in in next month. Um, and we've got a couple of different physios doing various talks and. I've been meaning to chat with Robin and Emma around a podiatry chat to give you a bit of foot uh, awareness and things like that too. All right, so and all it's all geared around that. It's all geared around your performance. So if you come in house, this is some of the stuff we can do. We can do some various um, testing bits and pieces, help you with your, your training, help you with your gym work if you've got your gym stuff at home, and then some uh, video assessment for some of your foot and ankle stuff with the podiatrist too. 
Oh, there you go. The videos work. Is that working for everyone too? Yep, beauty. So once again, this is some on the right. It's a bit of some of the stuff we would normally do if we could do some face to face, but we can do this one on one. So some vertical jump testing. We also have a an Alta G treadmill, which uh, is is essentially a a body weight reduction device for for building back up to running. All right. So now. Our primary focus is over long term is taking you from these sort of junior athletes, and there's probably a few of these guys on on the line now, into these sort of senior athletes, um, then having great success further and further into their careers. And you never know, I think this one, but you might end up as good as this bloke if you're lucky and if you work hard enough. Um, hey Moose, hope you're doing well. All right, so our role is built around education and that's probably the key bit over this sort of COVID period right now um, and then helping you guys with discounted services if you need help to come into the clinic and things like that so the the screenings and the sports coverage will and we haven't really chatted a lot about that but that could be down the back end um, of the program once everything starts to open up a little bit more uh, so that's our role but our, our focus is is certainly these key things so the more you're educated, the more you know, the better you'll be with your sport. Uh, injury prevention being a big one. So if you can stay on the pitch or in the pool, you're certainly better off than being in our clinic. So that's a big key. And once again, long-term athlete development uh, and support is what we want. And essentially, this is what we're, we're trying to do. So we're, we're looking to build bulletproof athletes. Um, if we can throw anything at you and you can tolerate it and then if your coaches can throw anything at you and you can tolerate and adapt, you get better and better and better. And it's about learning from your coaches, learning from us and the other providers that talk to you. So that's our, that's our big key. And these are some of the things that, that sort of we'll talk about, but also your coaches will too. Um, you know, skill being a big one for your coaches, but these are things we look at to, to make up a really good athlete. And if you tick all those boxes, you, you'll progress well with your sport. Uh, with us, if you're when, wondering when to contact us or when to get involved with us, these are probably the key things we tend to think about. So if you have some questions around performance and prevention, um, if there are things, say, in next week's talk we don't cover and you want, you want to know, let us know, reach out. Um, if you're unable to continue training or playing, one playing up, let us know. Uh, if you have persistent pain, and pain that tends to last like one or two weeks, I tend to think is, is, is a, a sign that you should sort of put your hand up. We don't like seeing people that have had pain for, for say, six to 12 weeks. It takes much longer to, to rehab that uh, injury back to get back on track. Um, and certainly if you're unsure about something, let us know. All right, then we've got a few uh, usual things like the socials and things like that. So give us a like. Uh, have a look at our Instagram, all that sort of jazz, um, and throw a few updates and various new exercise uh, videos and things like that that we find and like. Uh, but otherwise, thanks for the quick five minute chat, guys. Okay. Thanks, Matt. No worries. Um, and the other guys will, will chat with you next week, and we look forward to catching up with everyone. Awesome. Well, I think, as you might not have, if you've got on there too, I think we should just. Matt probably needs to be have a better introduction than what we were able to give him. And he's a fantastic supporter of CCAS, as um, Ian's written here, and a former high-performing um, athlete, one of, us, one of the most highly qualified sports scientists in Australia. So I think, I think that's, that's all right. <laughs> that sounds good. That sounds all right. We're, pretty, we're very lucky to have him and, and the whole team at CoSport. So um, it's, as I said, this online platform is... Um, something that we were already looking to build and to be able to have done this so quickly, we feel very privileged to do that. So, no, Thanks for having us, guys. And, um, yeah, certainly all the team love uh, working with you guys and the, um, the athletes that, that come along on board. Um, certainly a hard-working group, which is good. So this Friday, the swimming group actually has post-sport. Um, it's a maintaining your swimming capacities while out of the water. So make sure that you, I'll send out, or myself or Em will send out the, um, the Zoom code for that. That's going to be really, really advantageous to the swimmers, all the things that they can do when we haven't quite got the access to our normal swimming routine. 
So again, um, but everybody, all of the sports will have access to Coast Sport and we will be having regular sessions with them. Okay, so, just, so we're just going to go back to this presentation. We don't have much more to um, go through with you guys. We appreciate everyone giving us their time. I think at the moment we just wanted to make sure that we show off to everyone who's involved in these programs this year. So the numbers that we have in each of these programs has been really, really positive. We're um, thrilled to have so many people get involved from the start. Um, and we, as we said, we realise that these are under different circumstances, but um, still really excited to get these programs underway. So for the athletic squad this year, do you want to read out all the names for these ones? Sure, or? let's do it. Okay, so we've got Jade Bevan, Jessie Blackwell, Melissa Bloom, Emma Bloom, Bronte Carroll, Jay Clark, Taj Garner, Aidan G, Katie Gunn, Braden King, Sam Liddell, Annie Lowbridge, Cooper Noble, Ashley Pernica, Laura Reeves, Hannah Regan, Ava Simos, and Jared Smedley. So to have athletics back again is something that we're all really, really excited, excited about. about. I'm sure you guys are even more excited to get back out as well. Um, our swimming squad this year has got some a um, bunch of returning athletes that we're thrilled about and a whole bunch of new faces. So we've got Taylor, Mia, Koi, Summer, Olivia, Rihanna, Jonathan, Fergus, Ava, Jed, Sienna, Tom, Kobe, James, Hayden, Scarlett, Annika, Abby, Taj, Jordan, Lachlan, Casey, Kane and Emma. So welcome to everyone. We're thrilled to have you be a part of it. We're really looking forward to meeting everyone face to face as soon as we can. And our very big touch football squad, and I'll just go first name as well. <laughs> um, we've got Summer, Lara, Ella, Mia, Ava, another Ella, Angel, Ayla, Amelia, Brandy, Emerson, Erica. So quite a few returners there. Sienna, Lucinda, Tate, Jai, Jake and Samuel. Jake, Travis, Joshua, Logan, Sebastian, Riley, William, Archie, Ryan, Oscar and Charlie and Jesse. And, and welcome to everyone. And I just also wanted to note that we did run an Indigenous Talent ID Day. Um, it was back in November. End of 2019, yeah. Back in November with a program that followed on for selected athletes. Um, and really excited that we actually now have one athlete per each of these sports that have gained a scholarship into our program. So that's really exciting um, to come from a more school-based origin into a testing system and then into our programs. So congratulations to those three athletes as well. And that Indigenous Day will be on it again, again at the end of this year. So make sure you keep an eye out at school for any Indigenous um, um, athletes that can come and be a part of that day again. So. I think at the moment that pretty much brings us to the end of what we're going to talk about. Um, from tonight, our call to action will always be, uh, if we can just ask for any of that paperwork to come back to us that hasn't yet, the signed medical form and athlete agreement, um, just email that back to us would be really appreciated. Um, as we touched on the fees, the first invoice will come out in the next week or two and please just call me, call us um, or email me if you want to speak about anything to do with that. Download Team App. Please make sure that everyone's on there tonight. Um, again, just holler if you need any help. We'll do our best to get you on board. Like us on Facebook and Instagram. Um, our Instagram has been where we've been keeping up to date with um, any of our returning athletes, all the challenges that we've been doing in this um, isolation. Um, we've been keeping our Instagram story going with all the videos that everyone's been sending in. So. Make sure you keep an eye on that and, you know, you might see your face on there every now and then. Well, we're really happy that if you've done something that's, like, really good or, you know, like you tried a new drill or something like that, send through a little video and we will put it on our socials or a photo or, you know, we'd like to promote you as much as we can. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so prompt applies to emails. Please make sure in Team App if we ask you to RSVP to an event, just make sure you let us know if you're coming. We just, as I said, we've talked about the numbers. It's really important for us to know who's coming so we can communicate with the coaches. Um, you know, running a session for five people can be very different to running a session for 20 people. So we, they need to make sure they know who's coming. 
And what most importantly, just make the most of this opportunity to be a part of this program. Um, as we said, it's not everyone on the coast that gets access to um, the level of coaching that you will within these programs, um, the support from Coast Sport that we get and all of the other guest coaches and people that we bring into these programs. Um, it's not, it's, it's a great opportunity and we want to make sure that everyone makes the most of it. So. Just um, two more things. Can you go to the chat window? Yeah. Um, Kerry Smith, are you there, Kerry? If you are, can you just unmute and say, hey, I'm here just so that the kids can see who you are? Yep, I'm here. There she is. Okay, so... Sorry um, about that. Technical that, that, difficulties. That's all right. We, we got it all sorted, so that's good. We did a bit of an intro before, just basically said your name and, and the discipline. So um, for our throws athletes, this is Kerry, and uh, when we go to face-to-face, -face, Kerry will be looking after you. Now, somebody... Bye, guys. <laughs> Thanks, Kerry. Somebody actually asked a question about the presentation. So we'll, we can put this presentation up into TMAP from tonight, after tonight. Yes, yeah, so. so, well, I'll drop it into a YouTube and send them a yeah. link. Um, but I'm just wondering, the person that asked the question, if we can see who it was, Jesse Linnett, is it this part of the presentation or was it the Coast Sport part? Both. If possible. Both. Okay, so I know that I can give you ours. I'll just have to ask Matt if it's okay to uh, include his in, in our video. Um, no worries, understood. Thank you. That's okay. Does anyone else have any other questions that they want to... There was a question about swimmers. I think it was from Steve. I think Steve asked no, a question. No, he wants to listen to names. That's fine. Okay, all right. Um, uh, yes. Yes, I can send through the names of the um, athlete and medical form again to anyone that needs it. That won't be a problem. Yeah. So if you haven't received, for whatever reason, if you haven't received a medical 